President Trump firing back at several salacious claims in reporter Bob Woodward's upcoming White House tell-all, which paints a very embarrassing picture of day-to-day -day life inside the White House. The president tweeting the Woodward book has already been refuted and discredited by General, who's the Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, and General, who's now Chief of Staff, John Kelly. Their quotes were made-up frauds, a con on the public. Likewise, other stories and quotes, Woodward is a Dem operative. Notice timing probably talking about right before the midterms. So is the book credible, or is this another attempt by the left to take down the president? Here now to weigh in on that is political analyst at Media DC, Ron Meyer. Ron, thanks so much for coming on this morning. There's been a lot of books about this White House, but, you know, I mean, the Michael Wolff book was somewhat salacious. People thought he's a salacious author. Omarosa's book, who cares? But this is Bob Woodward. This is all the president's men. I mean, this guy is a very, yeah. very credible journalist, has been for 30, 40 years. He's um, an icon. W what do you make of it? Yeah, well, you know, the Washington Post's uh, sort of new-ish motto is democracy dies in darkness. But the problem is, is that journalism is dying behind anonymous sources. And the problem is, is that journalism more than ever needed an icon like Bob Woodward to come out and show how journalism is done, to show how real sourcing is done. And yes, you can use anonymous sources to fill in the blank, but relying solely on anonymous sources to make basically sort of un, uh, unsighted claims is, it ha is, is why people are losing faith in journals. And we needed Bob Woodward and people of his ilk to resurrect the field so people could gain their trust in it. Instead, what we have is basically going back to an elementary school of the telephone game where you had probably disgruntled, disgruntled employees telling him stories from other employees that might have actually been in the room for these conversations. Yeah. And so it's hard to actually rely on that. There's no doubt that he has real sources. But were those sources in the room? Had those stories changed? Were the people telling him uh, did they have their own did they have their own interests yeah. at heart and those and that's the problem when you have anonymous sourcing how can you trust it right now let's take a look at some of the claims made by the book uh, this one about secretary mattis who had remained above the fray up until now for the most part uh, here's mm -hmm. a quote mattis was particularly exasperated and alarmed telling close associates that the president acted like and had the understanding of a fifth or sixth grader mattis response to this while I generally enjoy reading fiction, this is a uniquely Washington <laughs> brand of literature and his anonymous sources do not lend credibility. Here's another one, uh, John Kelly, the claim in the book, here's the quote, he's an idiot. It's pointless to try to convince him of anything. He's gone off the rails, we're in crazy town. I don't even know why any of us are here. This is the worst job I've ever had. Kelly's response, this is another pathetic attempt to smear people close to President Trump and distract from the administration's many successes. So they're coming out in pretty fierce defense of the president and claiming that these quotes were never made. It makes you wonder, how do they get in the book? Yeah, well, like I said, I think it's just like an elementary school on the bus. You have a telephone game where somebody tells somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody. And what originally was the quote becomes something vastly different. Here's the problem with Bob Woodward right now. If you look at Bob Woodward and then you look at General Mattis, and they both tell you something else, right? If, if General Mattis, who's now the Secretary of Defense but has obviously a long record of service to the country, are you really going to look at, at General Mattis and call him a liar? I don't think so. I don't even think Bob Woodward would do that. And so that's the problem. When you have someone like a Mattis come out and say, I never said that, it really does call into question how did these sources develop? And that's the problem with anonymous sourcing. That's why Americans are So do you, do you, do you, not, think, do you not think that these, that, that these statements were made? Do you think that these are completely made up by Bob Woodward? Well, I th we don't know that. Yeah. We do not know. So I can't say yes or no. And, and this is the problem. Yeah. Trump, people who support Trump are going to think that this is false. People who are, are left-leaning are going to believe it. And so does that change anything? Does that advance the narrative? Does it advance the interests of the country? No. If we had good journalism that revealed what was going in, in the White House and it, it showed that there needed to be change, then something could come of that. That's real journalism. This yeah. isn't shedding light on the White House. This is just throwing more murk on the, what, what's already happening in journalism based on anonymous sourcing. It's not providing clarity. It's not providing light on our democracy. It's providing more shadows. Hmm. All right. It's an interesting topic, and it's yet another book about the administration. Thank you so much, Ron Meyer. We do appreciate it.